Okay, let's go. Bozeman originated when John Bozeman, Daniel Rouse, and William Meal planted the streets in August 1864. I wonder, were those town fathers conscious of their responsibilities to beginnings then? How do cities develop with unique personalities? Somehow our western frontier town went through the growth pains and metamorphosis to the city we love. We now have a Christmas stroll, music on Main, and a non-discrimination ordinance. What were the beginnings and who were the people who worked on the balances? There's certainly many facets to this jewel we call Bozeman and many different aspects to our history. I think the Big Sky Wind Drinkers Running and Jogging Club is one of those aspects and two people who spent that most delicate balance are Frank Newman and Andy Blank. More about them in a minute. Bozeman is not just outdoors oriented, but also an open and accepting city, most of the time. <laughs> the cauldron in the 70s frothed with many things, and one of them was the running boom. Distance runners in the Boston Marathon and the Olympics became heroes. Looking around this theater, I'm guessing many of you indulged in that era. <laughs> and probably can recognize some of the running icons of the time. Steve Prefontaine, Joan Benoit, and Tom Hayes were the running icons that led the way. The Presidential Council on Physical Fitness encouraged all Americans to follow. Running would improve your disposition, help you love your job, and add years to your life. Even Bozeman on the edge of the universe was affected. Two very disparate Bozemanites were running friends, hanging out in Red Lodge before the 1973 Beartooth Run. On that June day, they decided to start a running club, the first in Montana. Frank Newman possessed a stereotypical running body, below average height, 135 pounds. And he was the opposite, a bear of a man, six foot four and 215 pounds, a jogger not likely to win the Boston Marathon. Frank was a dreamer and an organizer, and in charge of the medical program at MSU. Andy was gregarious, always a big grin, and director of campus living. They actually wrote out their contract on a restaurant napkin, witnessed by their waitress. A key phrase gave equal rights to all types of runners in the club. Frank's dream was to help improve the health in Bozeman. He expressed his hope to hear about a club member crutching into the hospital, flinging the crutches on the table and exclaiming he didn't need them anymore since joining this healthy group of joggers. <laughs> Their first order of business was publicity. Andy and Frank thought something dramatic, like a 24-hour relay was the ticket. They recruited seven other men, plus a 17-year-old young lady from Bozeman High School. They were to run a mile each, in succession, around the only track in the valley out there in Manhattan. The intrepid Tensum completed over 216 miles in that 24 hours. They might not have finished had not some of the staff from Andy's office showed up to cheer them on. Whenever Andy was on the track, Andy was dandy. Andy was dandy. Six of those runners were the first of 38 charter members in the fast-growing and influential club. To fulfill their goal of equality, the club started citizen runs once a month, year-round. Families were encouraged to bring everybody, baby carriages to crutches. Andy even came up with a new way to determine run placing. Forget anachronisms like order of finish, let body weight have a bigger influence. <laughs> Andy's calculations put body weight in the numerator and run time in the denominator. <laughs> It did not last long, but it gained some notoriety for the club. <laughs> what we have now is the Vortex, an intersection of history, outdoor activity, and acceptance with the Big Sky Wind Drinkers in the center. Next, Andy and Frank needed a logo. They wanted something local, evocative of running. They picked the wild horses of the prior mountains, drinking the wind. The club's mandate was to promote fitness, so charter member Jim Banks came up with a motto. Fitness cannot be borrowed, bought, or bestowed. Like honor, it must be earned. 
Of course, most neophyte clubs are bound to be involved in some sort of scandal. The headlines in January 76 were something like, Frank's Frank Envelopes Found. Since the club initially had no funds, and Annie and Frank really were serious about their outreach mission to improve the health of Bozeman, they enlisted MSU into their efforts. Andy donated stamped envelopes from the housing office for recruitment mailings. Sounds a little shady, maybe, but when the Great Falls Tribune broke the story, Frank's response was bold. We have nothing to apologize for, but we'll pay for the envelopes now. <laughs> Later, along with the Nordic skiers, the wind drinkers lobbied the city to purchase land and help develop it for running and skiing, the land over by the cemetery that is now the Lindley Ski Area. It also initiated and sponsored runs like the Governor's Cup, the Bridger Ridge Run, and Huffing for Stuffing. Yet it is still the fun runs of three different distances that are the heart and soul of the club. When I first arrived in Bozeman 16 years ago, I went to a fun run. I realized this town is different. I saw families pushing their kids in chariots, an older, heavy-set gentleman who claimed he walked the shorter distances for the chocolate chip cookies at the end. <laughs> yes, that was Ed Anaker, and so is this earnest runner. <laughs> there are usually middle schoolers running, dreaming of being a Bozeman Hawk one day. The whole thing is a heartwarming sight. Come join us with a fun run with your stroller, or your crutches, or your elderly mother, or your speedy running shoes. We really do welcome runners, joggers, and walkers of all abilities. <laughs>